Okay, welcome to the Stamscapes Lab. We're going to try a quick card here. And when I say quick, we're going to start off with the half page uh, wood grain paper. And I'm going to be using the hybrid ink on this type of paper, this pre printed paper. Certain types of inks don't print too dark on it. And uh, I like the inks that are a little bit thicker um, to set more surface oriented on this than, say, something like a dye based ink. Okay, so the hybrid ink is just a combination of your uh, pigment ink and your dye-based ink. You can try something like a VersaFine Clear or something like that. That's an oil-based one. That might give you uh, some pretty good results. It might even be better. It might even be smoother, but um, I think this might serve my purpose in terms of, oh, kind of in theory how this can look. I don't know how this is going to turn out. Okay, so what I'm going for in this piece I want to go for some kind of movement in the background. Now, the wood grain paper already has the grains in it, so it reminds me of kind of movement in um, a natural setting with uh, kind of sky figures or something like that. I mean, it can represent, you know, kind of graceful kind of patterns in the background, but we're going to be adding in some additional ones because I want it to look like wind, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these um, kind of, I like to go for a little bit of an S-curvy type of thing like this. Um, I tend to think that looks nice and graceful in terms of a wind type of, um, you know, windier type of appearance in the background. Now, one of the good things about this is I'm not starting off with white paper, so I already have um, some texturing in here, or a lot of texture. And uh, I think I sh could be just get away with just using black in the background. Okay, so, I mean, you can just put in like just straight streaks too, but I tend to think that looks a little bit more, and uh, there's just a little bit more gesture to it for um, wind. And then I'm gonna put a tree right over the top of it. Okay, my surface underneath here is just so uneven these days after using um, Know, glitters and uh, I don't know different types of uh, little leaves and stuff like that. So where those little leaves are underneath there, you can see I'm getting a little bit of a stronger kind of impression going across there. But I don't know. We'll just kind of work around that. Okay, so every time I'm just kind of staying with this general kind of S curve type of thing right here. I'll try to go for a little bit more variation. Now I'm I'm not sure, but I think. Doing this in white over the cross, the top of it might be kind of interesting, but we'll see how that goes. We'll see if I need to do that, if I don't need to do that. Um, and it looks like this kind of, you know, these these forms kind of running across uh, through and in the background for my tree, then I think we'll be okay. All right, so that's what I'm going for right there. Um, when you bring diagonals or something like this type of kind of shape in the background pattern um, you know it, it can give visual movement um, to a scene now I haven't done this before but I was just thinking about doing something like this when I was doing a previous scene um, using these leaves here which we'll add into the piece but I wanted to go and try to make it look like kind of the wind is kind of blowing through um, you know our our tree here and kind of blowing um, leaves in the wind. I thought that could, in theory at least, be pretty interesting. Okay, let's see. Let's add in some additional grass textures. I've been using these grass textures a lot in the last few videos. Um, this one is actually called grass texture. And I'll build some of this up at the base. Let's do this. Let's give it a little bit more of a slope um, here. Um, you can just use that one, or you can just use this one. I like to use them in conjunction with one another. I don't always do that, though, because sometimes I don't have like the grass texture. I usually have this sedge filler stamp out all the time, though, because I use it a lot. It tends to be the really a really good filler stamp for um, any kind of grassy terrain or any kind of uneven terrain that you might need. All right, so we have that right there. Kind of, you know, I mean, it looks okay as is. I'm kind of debating on whether or not I want to use um, <clears throat> some color in that with some colored pencils. I'm not sure. 
Maybe I'll, I'll put my tree in here right now first. And let me do an assessment after that. Okay, this is the Art Foamies um, Winter Ash. You can use the smaller rubber one. Uh, these leaves here are a really good scale, though. Um, these fake, um, you know, these modeling modelers leaves. It's like model railroad uh, enthusiasts use that type of um, thing. I don't know, maybe the smaller one would work good in here too, but the scale is a little bit more suited for this one right here. Okay, so if I look at this, um, I'm only going to be using about two thirds of this or so, so you don't need to, you know, ink up that very top portion, but do ink up more than you think you're going to need, just so we don't you know, stamp it out and have like a, you know, the tops of the, uh, the branches not um, printing out. So use a little bit more than you think you're going to need. Eh, in terms of the inking up of the stamp. Okay, so down here, I'm gonna mask off some of this grass so that the trunk will be going into the grass, okay? Or the, uh, the tree looks like it's sitting amongst the grass, in other words. Okay, let's see. All right. Now I tend to press down too hard on the edge of these art foamies, so sometimes I get an impression around the edge. I mean, if that happens, I don't know. I don't think it's any big deal, but let me see if I can use more center pressuring right here. Okay, now this is foam and eh, I don't want to press too hard, like I said, but um, you know, a foam stamp, you get a little bit of lighter impression typically. Unless you're using much thicker inks. So the hybrid's pretty good, but if you use like a pigment ink, it gives you a much um, thicker um, impression. It's more solid. Okay. Ooh, that is really solid, huh? And I didn't get my edge on there, so I'm learning all the time. <laughs> all right, so anyways, hopefully that kind of gives this little feeling of wind through there. I really like the look of that. All right, now I was thinking about adding in some extra tone in here, just like I did with the, the background, but I'm looking at this now and I think it's going to be much, much easier for me to add a little bit of extra tone just using some colored pencils here. So uh, I, I'm gonna add in a little bit of brown and black. So I'm gonna, I like to anchor my objects down in the scene, okay? Um, so I'm going to do that with some darker tones here. You can add in some more color in here if you want to as well. Maybe a little tinge of some color might be nice. And this is um, some dark brown, but I'm adding a very light application of it right now. Kind of making my horizon here, or top of the slope a little bit darker, just so it creates a little bit more separation between um, surface and sky. All right, that's one tone. Here's a little bit of a darker brown. I'm using the darker browns because it's in the spirit of the color of the actual paper here, but just a little bit of a darker version. Okay, and, you know, before I get to that though, let me add in some little bit of extra grass. Hopefully it's not too late. Um, maybe I should use a Stazon pad. I just laid down some of this ink here. Um, I mean, some of my, not ink, but uh, colored pencil, which is wax. So sometimes, um, you know, if you try putting, you know, any type of media on top of wax, it doesn't apply, but Stazon is your, Ink that pretty much covers you know just about anything so I'll use that here I 
to slope this down this way. I, I thought a bit later, you know, if this is like wind running through there, I should probably angle my blades of grass slightly more, you know, to the, uh, um, to the right than I normally do. Let me do a really angled one right here. See, I kind of built it up there and clustered them like that, as opposed to doing like this even application across the uh, surface. Evenly spaced, that is. Okay, so let's add in a little bit more tone into this piece. I, mean, I don't like it to make it like super bright or anything like that on top of this paper because, you know, you're not going to get a pure green in there because you're doing it over the top of all these, you know, brown tones in there, warm brown tones. But you can get a tinge of um, whatever color you want to uh, represent on this uh, wood grain paper because it's not so um, dark. All right, so there's some green. It's just a tinge of green. So this is like this color green right here, but over the top of that. But and and again, I just put a very light application of it. I was doing more like this right here. Okay, yeah, kind of a light application. Here's a lighter green. Adding this over the top of darker things isn't going to make that area lighter, but you can get a little bit of this warm tinge in there. And I like to have um, variation in values up top, so I'm not coloring in everything uniformly. Um, let's see, here's black. I need to sharpen my black here pretty soon. I'm just using a little nub. I really like to, again, anchor my objects into the scene with a little bit of a shadow. Kind of have, have the shadow a little bit darker next to the object and then transition it out um, where it's a little bit lighter. Or it gets lighter and lighter as it moves away from your object that's casting the shadow. All right, let's add a little bit more of this black here in areas to kind of model our slope a little bit more. You want to have like a little bit of lights and darks within this space. And that makes it look more, um, the terrain kind of undulated, you know, it's not like flat concrete or something like that. Left and right bottom corner is a little bit darker. Um, in this case, the slope didn't go over there, so I'm just doing it right here at the base of that slope. All right, but I think that should do it here. You can probably put in a few like streaks of even colored pencil in there if you want to. Um, kind of do it in the same kind of, you know, the, spirit, you know, that you applied um, the uh, the ink in there in the background with. I'm going to try something. I don't know if this is going to show up at all here, but let's give it a try here. I'm going to put, try to put some kind of white. Yeah, it's not going to show up too much. That's a white colored pencil. Let me try the uh, Carbothello here. It's a pe white pastel pencil. Yeah, okay, that shows up a little bit more. I'll need to spray seal it if I want the Carbothello to, um, you know, really um, adhere to the surface, though. Okay, so I'm doing this in the spirit of the slope, uh, or that background again, but see... I'm going to put that through there like that so it looks like, you know, the wind is really kind of whipping around in there. <clears throat> if I don't like it, this Carbothello will just kind of wipe right off, too. It's, it's no problem. It's pastel pencil, so, you know, it can e be easily uh, removed. 
All right, so I think that just a little bit like that, maybe. Uh, maybe that's too even. Let me try to put on a few little kind of hatch marks like that. All right, I think that looks a little bit more windy, you know, having this kind of foreground uh, texturing in here, um, in addition to the darker, so lighter foreground over the tops of imagery and uh, the darker um, background kind of swooshes in there. <clears throat> All right, Carbothello. I think that's what it's call, called, Carbothello. All right, let's try to add in some leaves in here and let's see what those look like. Um, let's see. I think I need to work pretty fast with this because I think this is gonna dry up really fast. Um, when I'm putting little dots of glue down on kind of a thicker paper, it tends to um, not absorb quite as fast, but this is more of a matte paper, so I think if I put down some dots of glue, I think it's going to dry fairly. I don't want to do like tons of leaves like blowing in the wind, but just a few. I'm thinking this right here though, this is like a prime opportunity for some quote stamp. I'm going to pause right here and see if there's some kind of cool word stamp that I can use in here. I don't think I have uh, any like wind quotes or something like that, but let me take a look. Okay, I think I found a quote that works for me. Uh, this one right here. How fiercely, devoutly wild is nature in the midst of her beauty, loving tenderness. Um, you know, not perfect, but uh, I thought it was, uh, the wild is nature, I thought was the, uh, the good uh, kind of addition right in there. Okay, so let's add in some leaves and see what this looks like. I even like it just as is. All right, let's go for a couple different colors in here. Um, like I said, I don't want a huge number of these leaves in here, but. Adding in some um, golden ones that will just kind of blend in with the background. If we had some more orange, that would be cool. Um, uh, but we don't. <laughs> we don't have any. Um, all right, so anyways, these are, like I said, these are like model railroad, you know, modelers. Um, in terms of people that make models, you know, build models and little dioramas and things like that. Okay, so I'm going to put in just a few leaves onto this tree, then we'll put some like in the wind and maybe, you know, a few on the ground. We'll see how that goes. It's like the last leaves, you know, of uh, uh, whatever the season. Right in there, a little like that maybe. Yeah, we'll go for that. We'll see what that looks like. There is a kind of a flat side I noticed to these leaves and a kind of a curled side. Maybe maybe not on all of them, but a lot of them. They kind of have they're kind of curled up a little bit, so if you put them on the flat side, I think it works a little bit. Um, it adheres to the, uh, um, the leaf. I don't know, there's, there's more surface area to the leaf to uh, grab on to the, uh, the page with. Something like that. I mean, you don't really see it. They kind of blend into the background pretty well. So I'm going to put, um, let's see, I'll put... The, the biggest thing about this is I, I wanted some leaves, you know, 
like in the wind here. So that's the kind of the whole point of this uh, piece or whatever scenario. So here's a little bit of a yellow one right here. I don't know. They might end up just looking like crumbs. <laughs> I think they look okay. Maybe on the ones in the wind, I'll kind of angle them a certain way, like, you know, a little bit more aerodynamic, maybe. green one something like that I put those like in the jet stream right there I'm kind of blowing away like that on something like this if you want to make it a little bit more kind of dynamic you know you can get those um, leaf punches and punch these leaves out of um, gold um, paper you know it's like blowing these golden leaves through the uh, air that might be kind of interesting Let me take the Carbothello and kind of put more of a like a stronger wind like that. And do those little. Yeah, that gives it a little bit more energy, doesn't it? Like that. A little bit of a stronger kind of stroke like that. It kind of makes sense, you know, when you put in these stronger strokes in here too. Um, I think the the leaves in the uh, the leaves in the air in the wind um, kind of make a little bit more sense. Okay, so let me. Um, yeah, I, I think that's enough leaves in the wind there uh, for this piece. Um, I think I'm gonna not gonna put them on the ground. I think that would be too much in terms of a. I don't know, whatever stylish application of these, you know, I, you can put them down here, but I, I think it's going to distract from it because I think we already have enough up there. We've established that some are kind of clinging, you know, to the branches up there and then all, then you put some in the wind like that. I don't know, maybe, maybe another one right there. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of a minimalist uh, type of thing. Okay, let me show you what this is. Oops. Uh, was that sticking to something? Yeah, let's get this one up there. I don't know if that just came from something or whatever. Let's put it right there. I put in a big dollop of glue. There. Okay. This is just a scratch knife, by the way. <laughs> it works. It seems like it serves its purpose really well. in transferring these things and just, you know, easily lifting from there. Okay, so anyways, there's our piece. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll format this onto a little bit of a, you know, a perimeter um, frame and I'll put it into a, uh, you know, gold um, perimeter frame around it, <laughs> mount, I don't know, but I, 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 I got all mad, it's, I guess it's officially a mounting that you're doing here. But we'll see what this looks like in terms of a finished piece. All right, the card is formatted up. I think it looks pretty cool, and I like the idea of it. Um, I don't know, the concept of it. But when I put this gold around on here, I did get to thinking that maybe these leaves in gold would kind of look um really cool um just to match with this gold on the side maybe and i like this whole thing in the wind i, I do like these um these leaves out here but the leaves would stand out more against like a white background i don't know how you would represent the uh the movement through there i guess you can do it with the black or something like that but like this white on white wouldn't stand out so i don't know maybe this is the best type of paper for it, just in terms of a base, not necessarily, you know, the wood grain doesn't have to be that, but um, something like the vintage paper perhaps would look pretty cool. Or, but I was looking at this piece too, 
And I think it would be kind of cool to just stamp this. If we wanted to go for like this minimalist type of card, um, not in the wind or something like that, but I'm talking about using these leaves right here, these little modeler's leaves. Um, it might be cool to do just a tree like this on just a white piece of paper. Maybe put a shadow down, you know, at the base of it, but wouldn't it be cool with just, you know, to put all these leaves right around the base of uh, the tree like that? I think that would be a, a pretty interesting concept. You know, do it, you know, card format like this, or maybe a little bit of a elongated one. You can do that with any of them, like, you know, this size one right here, and there's, you know, put a bunch of leaves right on the base of it, or you can have, like, Lily is kind of coming out this way towards us. Something like that might be interesting, but I don't know. It seems like there's a lot of possibilities with these little modeler's leaves um, like that. Uh, looking at this, I'm wondering what it would look like um, just with all the leaves in red as opposed to these trio of colors. Um, I don't know. Let me see here. So I have that green up there. Let's let's integrate that green a little bit more into the scene with something kind of similar. Let me go for a little bit of a brighter green in here. And in just a couple areas, maybe, I don't know. I'm just kind of tossing around this idea right here. So you can go for some of that. Like about like so. Get a little of that warmer green glow to kind of uh, interact. Um, with the green leaves. Let me try something here too. Um, here's this little bit of reddish tinge. Now I don't want red on the ground, but maybe I can make my shadows in a couple of these areas, you know. Um, have this little bit of a crimson kind of, you know, touch to it. And this isn't to, you know, for someone to take a look at this end result and say, oh, yeah, there's there's some red right there. And then there's some red down there or something like that. It's supposed to hit them kind of more on a little bit of a subconscious level. See this little bit of a tinge of red right there. And that kind of brings those leaves, you know, into the color scheme a little bit, you know, uh, more it integrates them a little bit more kind of visual harmony, maybe. I don't know. Um, you can be the judge of that. Uh, I guess I don't have too much yellow, speaking of that. So let's warm that up a little bit. Like about like that. And again, you don't want to fill this hole in. You want area in. You want it to be a little bit darker, lighter, darker, you know, some variation right in there. So you just be careful if you're doing these little tweaks like that, that you're just not darkening the entire um, piece up like that. Okay, so I, I still need to um, spray seal this um, with a spray fix to lock down the Carbothello, but I think that looks okay as the as is. Fun little kind of experiment here, um, trying to depict wind, kind of knocking down that white a little bit. The white's going to get knocked down a little bit when I um, spray fix this. Um, it makes the, the lighter, the light on dark a little bit darker. So just keep that in mind. Now, if it gets too dark and it's like, oh my God, what happened to the white running through the trees? Then you just put that right over on top of the spray fix and then you just lightly spray fix that down again. But um, I don't know. Leaves in the wind. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you stamp this out, I hope you have a good time. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know uh, in the comment section. Thanks for watching.